Hey everyone and welcome back for more news on Infinite Magic Raid. Uh, we are going to talk about the patch note and especially about that new legendary coming this Friday in the Miracle Wishes. Is he good enough to pull for him or not? We are going to talk about that but take into consideration also that in two weeks we are going to have the Chinese New Year and probably a new limited unit. Uh, the first copy is going to be uh, given for free though but uh, still... That guy seems really interesting, so it's up to you to decide if you want to summon for him or not. But for now, we don't have the damage coefficients and etc. The turn meter coefficients also. So we are going to have to wait a bit, at least tomorrow, in order to get the details on the new unit. As every Thursday, I'm going to try the new unit and try to post a video talking about him in details. But here, we are going to have a first look to the hero. So, it's a new legendary hero from the Saga City Alliance. It's an attacker with the blue mark. He might deal a lot of damage with his skills, but what does really matter is going to be his passive and the exclusive too. So, let's first have a look to his passive. When he is under parry status, that means he has some stance bar remaining. The yellow bar below the units, below their HP bar, uh, on the new heroes from the new faction only. His stun meta is increased at the end of an enemy's turn. So if you have a popper in front of you, popper is going to try to reduce your turn meta, but he is going to get some turn meta increase. We don't know anything yet about how much turn meta he is he going to get after the turn of the enemy, but it might be interesting, especially if you have a look to the second exclusive. Reduces the turn meta reduction effect taken by Jue Wu. So if popper tries to lower your turn meta, you are going to get less turn meta reduction. And also imagine accumulating that with um, the emblem that reduces by 15% the turn meta reduction taken by the unit. It might be really interesting, so Popper is might, maybe not going to reduce that much turn meta on that guy. And also, with the second exclusive on the passive, if self turn meta is under 50%, the, his turn meta is going to be doubled. So after any enemy takes a turn, his turn meta is going to be doubled. Is it broken or not? Tell me in the comment below, but I'm pretty sure that it is broken. For example, Imagine using that guy with a lot of attack, crit rate, crit damage, and a really low speed amount. If you face a popper, popper is gonna play. And if you have only maybe 48% turn meta when popper plays, um, probably you are gonna get close to the 100% turn meta right after popper plays, right? And so you are gonna be able to deal a lot of damage maybe with the ultimate or reduce the turn meta of enemies with the first active skill and horrify them. And also, before doing that, he's gonna cleanse all the debuffs from self and restores his max stance value. It looks broken for now, with only the exclusive 2, right? If you have a look to the other skills, on the basic attack, he's gonna target a single enemy, two stages of attack damage, consuming 100 stance value to deal extra internal injury attack damage. If the target is horrified, the extra damage will not consume stance value. He can horrify with the first active skill and probably this is the one you want to use directly at the beginning of the fight. Uh, if you have a look to the ultimate, deals 5 stages attack damage and attack in internal injury damage to a single enemy. So with that skill, he might deal a lot of damage on a single enemy. And if he does deal a lot of damage, it's multiple stages of attack. So if the target is Donald Rebelli or if you have Nicolas Exclusive 3 in front of you, you might be able to one-shot the target even if the, t the enemies have the apple. So it looks pretty interesting so far. So if you have a look to the exclusive one, uh, on the first active skill, increases the duration of Horrify inflicted to two turns. It can be really interesting though. Horrify inflicted cannot be blocked by the enemy whose attack is lower than self. So if you concentrate on the attack on that unit, the Horrify won't be blocked. So if the enemy has the um, block debuff on them, you are still gonna inflict the debuff. Really interesting, isn't it? Only the um, d control immunity from uh, given by Esther is gonna be able to block that. So, exclusive 3 on the ultimate removes all buffs from the target before dealing damage and increases internal injury damage deals. For every one layer of buffs removed, it's gonna increase the bonus damage. <laughs> so, he, I, I told you, 
He might be really strong to one-shot enemies and to control the 10 meter of enemies. That guy is going to be another broken guy, in my opinion. Tell me what do you think about that in the comment below. So now we are going to have a look to the patch notes. So this is the banner of this Friday. And for the first time, we are not going to get a new epic hero uh, in the Miracle Wish. I don't know why, but... Yeah, we are going to have Makin though, so if you want to start the game, it's going to be an, a great banner, maybe one of the best banners you can have in the game. You are going to have Makin, so you can uh, destroy the campaign with Makin, okay? You have Anton also, so you can protect your heroes, get a consolidation shield, heals, dodge cleans. You have Muradin to put some uh, extra buffs on your units. If you are lucky enough, you can pull Seth, or Jui Wu, or Popper. If you summon uh, early game in Miracle Wishes, you can spend your gems in order to pull on to pull on uh, Miracle Banners. If you can get one of them, you are gonna have a big start, a really really interesting start because all of them are great to start the campaign. Seth is an amazing unit. Popper for PvP, Marvel for both PvP and PvE at the beginning, Jui Wu for both contents probably, Makin great, Luth is great for the Tower of Mark early game, Anton, same comment, and Muradin great also, and they are all great in their faction abyss, so that's really interesting. So then some news about the Endless Cloister. They are gonna add a new Divine Power card, the Power of Frost, so if we have a look to the game, I'm gonna... Uh, hide that. Uh, if we go on the Endless Cloister, it's not a category of, of card though. It's gonna be a power of frost, so another kind of card here. Why not? Why not? So if we go back to the patch note also, they are gonna add three new bosses and replace the boss Nidja by Ifrit instead. So poison teams might not be efficient anymore to beat the, bo the last boss of this content. And I don't know if they are just gonna add the three bo bosses or if they are gonna change the three we have at the moment by these three. I don't know yet. And then optimize some temple rules, added the story guide when temple is unlocked for the first time and added the pop-up for guiding adventurers to obtain mythic shards to summon mythic heroes and updated the logo resources of Sagacity Alliance. So that was all for the video, hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. Remember that you can still use my promo code ACTARIM until the end of this Friday to get 5% more cash back on all your purchases on AppSuite and so save a lot of money. Thanks for watching, have a nice day and see you in the next video, bye bye.